everyone, this is Dr. Weird 28. I'm a Tarkov streamer on Twitch. Uh, in this video, I wanted to go over the different armor types and some different considerations for them as far as what we are uh, wanting to use to kind of classify which ones may be better or worse for one thing or another. So as you move throughout the game at the beginning, you're going to probably start with some lower level armors like Paka level 2. Um, works fine at the beginning of the, of the game just because the PvP, most people have similar level armor and poor ammo types, so it's going to protect fine against it. As you move up and level your traders and find more loot or get rewards from quests, you tend to get better armor. And higher ranked armor can resist bullets better, basically. Um, so we're going to take a look here. I've got a few different types of armor. Uh, so this right here is a TV 110. And you can see it is a armor class 4. Here we have a gazelle. Armor class 5. And here we have a hex grid. Armor class 6. So these are three different tiers of armor, and it goes down as low as 2. So the higher the class of armor, the better it is at stopping bullets. Now, another thing you want to consider when looking at armor is what does it cover? So coming back to this TV 110, it covers just the thorax. That's a class four armor covering just the thorax. If we come back to the gazelle, armor areas, you can see it covers thorax and stomach. So stomach shots are going to be protected a lot more with that. And that's a class five. You look at this hex grid, which is a class six, and it also only protects the thorax. So that's important to know how much of the body is covered because with how the damage works in Tarkov, let's say hypothetically they shoot you in the stomach. Well, as soon as your stomach runs out of HP, each additional shot to the stomach is going to be distributed throughout the rest of the body. So you want to be able to protect that part of your body more so, more so, especially the stomach and thorax because a lot of people just aim kind of center mass and may hit there. Now, while those cover just the thorax or stomach and thorax, there are armors, so we'll come over to this one, such as this guy right here, which covers left arm, right arm, thorax, and stomach. So it's extremely protective. Similarly, the six, we call it a Zabralo. Left arm, right arm, thorax, stomach. And that both of these are level six. So very effective in protecting the whole body. So those are, are very beneficial. So we know armor classification levels. We know what they're covering. And then we should also note the amount of uh, armor points that it provides. So this Thor right here, armor points, 55 compared to the Zabralo. This is 80.4, but it can be 85 when it's maxed out. That's big because, again, it's going to be able to absorb more damage before it starts being distributed to your body. Coming back to our previous class here, so this hex grid, even though it's level 6, has 50 damn armor points. This TV-110, level 4, has 85. Even though this has more armor points, higher class armor is typically what you want if you're able to use it. Again, consider the body coverage. So like, I'd probably go with a gazelle because it covers the stomach and thorax over the hex grid personally just because it only covers the thorax there. Now, so we've covered what the armor covers. We've covered armor points. We've covered the class. What we also want to consider is how does the armor affect us physically? So looking at this TV-110, you can see change in movement speed, minus 8%. Change in turning speed, minus 4%. Ergonomics, minus 5%. So it's going to have a slight effect on how well we move. That's the big thing. The gazelle, very similar. 
minimally impacts us. The hex grid minimally impacts us. So that's the benefit of those. Now, if we come back to this, let's say this is Rollo, boom, minus 35%, 21%, 27%. So this is going to have a significant impact on how we move overall. Minus 28, 16, 20. So the more that of your body that's covered, likely you're going to see more of an impact on how, how you move. Now, the, there are three other things I want to discuss relating to armor. <clears throat> One is the difference between an armored rig and armor. So an armored rig, like this CPC Mod 2, it's just a class 5 and covers just the thorax. The difference between something like this and this, besides the armor points and what it covers, an armored rig actually covers or um, acts as a rig too. So you put this on your body, so I'm going to do that. And I've already got my mags in there. I don't have to worry about throwing a tactical rig on in addition to my armor. If I were to throw this on, this is just armor. I, I cannot put this on here. I need to add a rig. And why that's important is... Um, it does impact your weight overall, how much you put on there. But also, you, depending on what map you're on, there are some extracts with a red rebel, this guy here, that you can extract keeping an armored rig on, but you have to drop armor by itself. So if you're going to reserve and you're doing the red rebel cliff descent ex extract, if you have this on, you don't have to drop anything. You can just extract. If you have this on with a rig, you got to drop this in order to be able to use that extract. So what map you're playing, what extract you may consider using will dictate what you may or may not want to use. Uh, the, the next thing I want to discuss related to armor is, this is not current, but in the future, they are talking about how custom hitboxes are going to play a role in for each armor type. So we look at a slick here, which is one of the more coveted armors out there, even though it only covers the thorax. It's level six, 80 armor points, um, minimally affects movement. So it's very strong. However, if you look at it, there is a ton of open space on the sides here. If we are to look at, uh, let's see if we have one here. The, this, you can customize what armored plates you put in here so it'll protect you to some degree. Um, probably the better example would be coming down here. We call this the, the rat rig or diaper rig. You're going to get a little more customization as to what armor plates you can put in here. So we don't know the full impact of this quite yet. However, what it means is that in the future, there may be some other factors to consider with your choosing one armor versus another because it may make it so that, yeah, it's really strong armor where it covers, but it exposes a lot of the rest of the body. Is it worth it? The last thing that I want to cover regarding armor is repairability. So... Again, we've got a selection of armors here. Let's talk about this TV-110. This is level 4 armor, 85 armor points for the max. This repairs extremely well. So it was at 85 originally, and I brought it in, and I think I died with it going down to like 61 armor points out of 85. I repaired it to 84.4, so when I repaired it, it basically came back to, to brand new. Um, and what, another nice thing about the TV-110, look at all the sp slots there for something like that. Here's the level 6 armor. Those are all the slots for that. So if you're wearing an armored rig, you can consider um, how many slots are there for whether it's just transporting loot or um, what sort of gear you're bringing in. Uh, back to the repairing, though. Now, the Gazelle... 65 armor points, class 5, covers stomach, thorax, really good. 
The issue with it is it does not repair well at all. So if I dive this and been hit in the, in the chest a few times, odds are it's going to come back and maybe be like 50 armor points. Maybe I'll run it one more time, or maybe I'll just sell it and buy a new one. It's really up to you how you want to play the game. Now, there's a um, chart out there right here where it goes over how well the different armor is repaired. This is created by Axie. You can see right here. But if you uh, look on the left here, these armors, the Karan, the Slick, the Defender, TV-110, the M1, 6B23-1, all these are repaired extremely well. And they have helmets here too. Next down, polymer. So it's kind of based on the type of material as far as how well it's repaired. The armored steel makes sense because I believe they can just kind of swap out the plates theoretically. Polymer, all the way down at the bottom here, we're going to go ceramic. So the Zook, the Gazelle, 6B13, 6B23. All these don't repair well at all, so you might get one or two uses out of them and then just want to toss them. And it progressively moves up this way. Uh, helmets fall into this category as well, or different parts of helmets. So um, down here, you can see which are helmets repair the best. And then moving over here to the right, which repair the worst. So if we're going to talk specifically about helmets, a lot of different factors with it. So we're going to look at this fast MT. So it has a high ricochet chance, so that's worth considering. Um, there's different mixed materials there, covers. Because I have all these different attachments on, maybe we'll take them off. Boom. Okay, so if it's just this, it only covers the top and the nape. So not a ton. High ricochet chance, armor points 38.1, and a class 4. Now, what's nice is if I want to progress or add how much coverage is on there for more protection, I take these fast ears, which are armor class 3, but high ricochet chance, and I throw that on here. Suddenly, I now have coverage over the ears as well. And if I want a little more coverage, suddenly I have coverage over the face. Here we go. Over the, the ears, eyes, jaws. So you can modify some helmets to add additional protection. Now, this is only a class two. However, it may still protect with its ricochet chance. And all these add up to further armor points. Now, it doesn't mean that it's stronger in a whole because it's really dependent on each part of it, but it can be useful to increase your protection. You look at something over here like um, this fast MT. We got some uh, right here. Protects the jaws better. So if you're worried about getting a headshot, some different, uh, um, some development in how your helmet is aligned is worth considering. Here, this, here of, uh, we got a helmet with a face shield here that might help stop some of the scav seven millimeter buckshot head eyes. Back to our Chad box here. The, these are probably some of the best helmets in the game if you're worried about headshots. So, uh, right here, the face shield, armor class six, right there, protects eyes and jaws. Got the top na nape ears with the regular helmet as well. So you know that the, the helmet itself is a level four there, but the protection on the face is really useful. The Alton, another really solid one. Got class five for both the face shield and the helmet. The penalty of these, however, is you cannot wear ears on this. So you're not going to be able to hear things nearly as well. It's really dependent on how you want to play, um, what style, are you more of a W key player, you're more of a wait and see or re react to sound sort of player. Um, just different things worth considering. So this covers most of the current uh, important points for armor in Tarkov. Um, as the game develops, there very likely will be some different considerations, especially as the hitboxes get changed. 
If you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, keep it weird.